Welcome back. Just gone 528. As I was saying before the break, tenants are now paying record costs to secure rental properties or even to stay where they already live, as rents across mm -hmm. the country increase at the fastest rate ever. So, according to Rightmove, the average rent for a property in the UK was £1,328 last month, and that is up 12% on this time last year. Now, it'll come as no surprise to learn that London is the most expensive region to rent in the UK at £2,361 a month. On average, that's up 17% from 2021. But it's those elsewhere who've seen the biggest surge in prices. Properties in North Shields in Tyne and Weir letting for an eye-watering 35% more in September compared to the same time last year, with Newcastle, York, Maidenhead and Glasgow also facing significant increases. But here's the kicker. Despite these huge increases in prices that uh, renters are now facing, some properties are still completely uninhabitable. They're infested with mice, with mould and with sewage. Housing activist Quajo Twenaboa's new programme on all four, Untold, Help My Home <laughs> is Disgusting, lifts a lid on some of the conditions those in social housing have no choice but to live in. Sarah is the latest tenant to reach out for my help. I can see what the problem here is. Damp and black mould cover the walls of her hallway. I mean, look at that. Yeah. How long has this been happening for? So it's been going on for four years. Sarah says the only action taken by her landlord has been to wash and paint over it all. Goodness. And is this the only place in the house that you've got mould and damp? No. It's spread it all over. Well, mm. those are the conditions that some renters have to live in. We're asking this morning, should tenants be given more powers? We're joined by housing activist Quajo Twenaboa, who believes tenants need more protection, and business consultant Tina Knight, who says the rental system already favours tenants. Um, Tina Knight, very good morning to you. Morning. You are morning. not in any way connected to conditions like that. <laughs> um, but you do, uh, you are a landlord. I am. Yeah. Now, right now, we have people, as, as we said before the break, in some parts of the country, a, a rental property comes up and 30 people go to see it. There's a sort of competition of in, such intensity that people have got no chance of, of getting a property. And even once they do, rents are so expensive at the moment. But you think that tenants already have power on their side? In what way? Tenants definitely have power on their side, and you can't blame landlords for the housing shortage. This is respective governments going back years who have not addressed the problem properly. So you can't blame landlords for that. And the whole point is that landlords balance their rent. And if everybody thinks that all landlords are like Rackman, um, I'm sure um, that Quay Joe's panorama type thing, mm. very one-sided, it always picks on the really worst possible houses. Uh, normally, council owned, so the funny thing is you're asking government to give more powers um, to the tenants when they're the landlords that are causing the major you problems. You actually think that tenants have too much power, don't you? I do, because... Um, In what way? It, Can you give me an example? Yes, well, the thing is, if you get somebody who refuses to pay their rent, yep. which a lot of them do, you can't get them out for non-payment of rent until they've not paid for two months. And then you start proceedings, you're looking at um, a legal cost of between three and four thousand pounds. And they play the game and they've learned that they can make it run till at least six months. So they get six months rent. They, they, rent they get, free. They're free. They get evicted and go and start the whole process. So they'll normally end up paying rent only twice a month in a year. And there are professional people who do that. The whole point is that if there are areas where people are vandalising your property, which many landlords put up with, um, vandalising, you can't get them out. And there's when people say that they're living in these appalling conditions that nobody can condone, mm. that they're, they're frightened to say anything because they be evicted. You can't just evict people. These people, there are laws there. You can't convict, um, you know, okay. evict them. Uh Quajo, mm -hmm. you've listened to all of that. Yes. Tenants have all the power on their side mm -hmm. um, and uh, landlords are the ones who are in trouble because they can't get the tenants out. Yeah. 
Um, I mean, in response to that, I mean, I completely understand from a landlord's perspective concern about tenants mashing up their properties and um, destroying their properties. That shouldn't be allowed. Um, I think anyone would agree with that. But to say tenants have more rights than landlords is just completely wrong. I mean, in this documentary, for example, I was stood ankle deep in raw sewage um, in a tenant's home and it had come up through his shower and it had come up through his toilet. And I got there before the landlord um, did as a campaigner days later. Now, that shouldn't be the case. I mean, tenants have said time and time again, they're even scared to complain to their landlord um, because they then feel they're at risk of then being retaliation evictions and being kicked out well, of their the home. Chase. Cut to the chase here. On your bucket list of, mm -hmm. of wishes, what rights do you want tenants to have that they don't have at the moment? Um, well, I want them to ha uh, have their voices listened to. I think in terms of no fault evictions, I, again, I completely understand about uh, landlords having their homes mashed up, but I think it does need to go because we're seeing increases in that, and especially with the cost of living crisis, what's going to happen is tenants are going to be evicted and we don't have enough social homes for them to turn to. I'm still not clear what rights you're looking for. Just, just give me some examples of the actual rights you want uh, in, installed in law. So I think that, well, tenants shouldn't be living in um, right. disrepair. I want to see that in law, that landlords are held to account for that, whether that's but social they are, housing. And there are places they can go to. This is the I mean, whole point, yeah. that they shouldn't live in those conditions. But going to the landlord, if their landlord mm -hmm. isn't responsive, there are plenty of places. There's yeah. social services, there's mm -hmm. councils. There are plenty of places yeah. they can go to, mm -hmm. but an awful lot of them don't go because mm -hmm. they're reasons. They don't want to come out into the limelight. That's why they don't make the complaints. Um yeah, I mean, tenants do go to the councils to yes. complain and they do go to environmental health, but I've seen time and time again where the process is so dragged out and in a lot of cases they're living in emergency disrepair with ceilings collapsing, cockroaches, mice, damp mould, raw sewage. No one, everyone, whether you're a landlord or a tenant, will agree. No one should be living much, in these conditions. This is the very much the minority. The, a major, thousands, a major thousands. proportion of landlords are individual people yep. who, with the ridiculously low interest rates yep. that should have been gently increased over mm -hmm. a period of time, have been ridiculous. Tina, can I? People haven't had yeah. to, have okay. to go can on I, their pensions. Can I ask a, a question? Yeah. The average rent for a property in the UK was £1,328 last month, up 12% from September last year. There are a huge number of people who cannot afford those rents or even get properties. Should the there be a rent cap, Tina? That's no, my question. You, you there can't be a put cap? a rent cap on something because what you're not looking at, unless you individually look at the accounts of the landlord mm -hmm. to see what the outgoings are, has nobody correlated the fact that mortgage companies have doubled and trebled to most of these landlords are individuals trying to supplement their pensions. So what is the best way for people trying to rent at a reasonable price? That respective governments wake up and smell the coffee, <laughs> stop these major developers building large houses with a minimum amount of social housing mm -hmm. and clique housing, and sort out there's plenty of ways you can build small houses quickly for these people and increase the number of social housing yeah. in a development and stop All the right. developers making millions at the cost of the less. Okay, we're out of time, guys. But I have to say, <laughs> I have to, no, I have to say, and uh, this head-to-head -head between landlords and tenants has been mm. going on for as long as I can remember. There Generations, never, see, yeah. never seems to be a reconciliation like that. It's always head-to-head. -head. The <laughs> trouble is that with yeah. interest rates going up yeah, and yeah. with public spending cuts and threats to the amount of social housing that developers are obliged to build, it doesn't look like that's going to get solved. But what yeah. should be solved, Quajo, mm -hmm. is councils and housing associations mm. should never allow people mm -hmm. to be living in raw sewage or Absolutely. infested but the councils cockroaches. are the biggest, biggest problems. The councils are the ones that own the worst houses. You've said that, yeah. yeah. You've said yeah. That. And if they're not willing to live in it, I don't think absolutely anyone should be, quite Absolutely. frankly. Thank you both okay. very Can much. call time indeed. on it? Thank, Thank you both. So, oh, I'm <laughs> sorry. Exactly. I no, not at all. We, we, we were off the air. No, no, no. no. <laughs> 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 well, don't worry.